What if I told you that the world is ending and it's all because of a red cow? What? Sounds crazy, but stay with me because as unusual as this sounds, this isn't sensationalism or clickbait. You see, on January 14th, 100 days into the war, Hamas spokesman Abu Ubaidah released a statement reiterating the motives for the October 7th attack against the state of Israel. During his speech, he cited the arrival of the red heifers into occupied Palestine and described it as a provocation, which seems like a totally random point, especially against the backdrop of the other justifications for the October 7th attack, such as the ongoing occupation, the expansion of illegal settlements on stolen Palestinian land, the thousands of Palestinian hostages illegally held in Israeli prisons, the blockade and siege of Gaza, and the normalization deals between Israel and the Arab states. But upon closer examination, the arrival of the red heifers is a significant event, not only for the people of Israel and Palestine, but for the entire world. You see, the red heifer plays a central role in a prophecy of epic magnitude. It isn't just a cow, it's a domino in what many around the world perceive to be the end of times. By the end of this video, you will understand how the religious beliefs of the world's most influential religions regarding the final destiny of mankind, known as eschatology, are converging onto a single point, a single event, that could have ramifications so great that it brings about the end of the world as we know it. And it all starts with a red cow. Now, before we continue, I need you to understand something. It doesn't matter who you are or what you believe, whether you're Muslim, Christian, Jewish, agnostic, atheist, these ideas are real to the people and influential groups acting upon them. These ideas can thus affect you, regardless of your personal beliefs, because their actions could trigger catastrophic events for not just the Middle East, but for the whole world. Let's start off with a brief introduction. There are many who insist that the Palestinian-Israeli conflict isn't a religious one, that it's a geopolitical one, and a story of settler colonialism. While this is true, the religious undertones at play cannot be denied. We all know that Jerusalem is one of the holiest cities in the entire world, revered by the three Abrahamic faiths, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. And at the very heart of Jerusalem is a very important site, the Al-Aqsa Masjid compound. And at the center of the compound is the Golden Dome of the Rock. To Muslims, the Al-Aqsa compound is the third holiest site in Islam. To Jews, it's believed to be the site of the Temple Mount, where the first and second temples once stood. The first temple was built by the prophet king, Solomon, destroyed by the Babylonians when Nebuchadnezzar conquered Jerusalem, rebuilt as the second temple by King Herod, and destroyed again by the Romans when they conquered Jerusalem in the first century. This temple is central to the Jewish faith, and there is debate within Judaism over how and when the temple will be rebuilt. To Jews, this isn't just wishful thinking, it's a prophecy. The construction of the temple and the arrival of their Messiah is an event that will come to pass and vindicate the Jewish faith. Religious Jews long to re-establish not only their historic kingdom, but also their relationship with God. It is believed that before the first temple was conquered and destroyed, the spirit of Hashem, or God, abandoned the temple. So in a way, the relationship of the Jewish people to God has been severed and cannot be fully restored until the temple is reconstructed. For God's promise to the Jews to be confirmed, the temple must be rebuilt and the Messiah must appear. For thousands of years, this was completely out of reach until Israel reconquered Jerusalem from the Arabs in 1967. When Commander Gore declared that the Temple Mount was back in Jewish hands, it rekindled hope for a long-awaited Third Temple. The Six-Day War was a miracle of biblical proportions and was a, um, a cataclysmic opening of a, of a new era for Israel and for the whole world. This was seen by some as a divinely ordained event and a necessary step towards the re-establishment of the Holy Temple. But there's a problem, a massive problem. The Jews believe this temple must be rebuilt 
on Temple Mount, meaning the Al-Aqsa compound, the Islamic holy site, must be destroyed. And so despite controlling Jerusalem for the last 60 plus years, Israel has been quiet about any intentions to rebuild the temple, as this would be seen as a major provocation and incite a war between Israel and the Muslim world. But working in the background are groups dedicated to the destruction of Al-Aqsa and the reconstruction of the temple. One such group, the Temple Institute, has worked diligently for years raising money and awareness and building relationships with powerful forces both in Israel and around the world to facilitate the construction of the Third Temple. And after decades of occupation and growing disinterest in the cause of the Palestinian people, their calls for the reconstruction of the temple have grown louder and louder. Talk of rebuilding the temple is no longer considered a fringe idea. Today, there is a lobby in the Knesset of, of how many members of Knesset that are constantly speaking about Jewish rights to pray on the Temple Mount. There are members of Knesset that actually talk about the rebuilding of the Holy Temple. Do you understand that 20 years ago, these people wouldn't have been given a moment on prime time television in Israel to say these things. They would have been laughed out. So, a few years ago, this was considered fringe? Zealots, lunatics, peculiar. Today it's mainstream. And this group is also supported by powerful evangelical Christians in the West. For evangelicals, they view the construction of the temple as a necessary precursor to the return of Christ. It's a bit of an unholy alliance because the Jews believe that all Gentiles, aka non-Jews, will serve the Jews when the Messiah returns, while the evangelicals believe that Christ will return and either convert or kill the Jews. Bit of an awkward relationship. The means to get there are the same for both groups, however. Al-Aqsa must be destroyed and the temple must be rebuilt. And this puts them at odds with the Muslim world, primarily the Palestinians who view themselves as the defenders and custodians of the Al-Aqsa Mosque. Okay, so we have historical context now, but what does this all have to do with cows? Well, according to Jewish theology, the temple cannot be reconstructed until the Jews of Israel are purified. And the process of purification requires the sacrifice of a rare type of cow. It says that God spoke to Moses and Aaron saying, this is the ritual law that God has commanded instruct the children of Israel to bring you a red cow without blemish in which there is no defect and on which no yoke has been laid. So it says that we're supposed to take a perfectly red cow with no uh, white hairs or dark hairs at all and a cow that no yoke has ever been on. So as a result, it's very, very rare to find a baby cow that is completely red. It's basically the bougiest cow of all time. This kind of red heifer has been incredibly difficult to find. Even with genetic modification and breeding, Finding the perfect red heifer domestically in Israel has been near impossible. But in 2022, five of these perfect red heifers were discovered on a ranch in Texas. The Temple Institute in Jerusalem spent over $500,000 to airlift these red heifers to Israel, where they were placed on a secretive farm for protecting and grooming. Now, they were too young to sacrifice in 2022. Per the rules of their theology, the Jews cannot sacrifice these heifers and purify the Jews of Israel until they reach a certain age. The Book of Numbers explains that ashes of the red heifer are used to purify priests for their service in the temple. These red heifers are now between one and a half to two years old. To replicate the ceremony mentioned in the Bible, they need to be at least three years old. In April of this year, these heifers will be of age and the sacrifice can commence. To prepare for this, the Temple Institute and other groups have been making all sorts of preparations. Firstly, the sacrifice must be made by the perfect priest, not only trained in the process of sacrifice, but also with a direct bloodline to the prophet Aaron, the brother of the prophet Moses. The sacrifice must also be made east of the Temple Mount around the Mount of Olives where the priests can be within sight of the compound itself. And this land has already been purchased. According to those working on the project, the ceremony of the red heifer needs to be performed on the Mount of Olives and in a place that would have looked directly into where the temple stood. The land I'm standing on, bought 12 years ago, fits both of those standards. It's had to be exactly at the front of the place that the priest that made this ceremony can see the holy of the holy place. Rabbi Yitzhak Mamo owns the land here on the Mount of Olives. 
and we hope that in a year and a half from today we can make here in this area the ceremony of the red heifer that actually will be the first step to the temple. Mamo says the ceremony needs priests who have not been defiled by touching anything dead. The Temple Institute actually has uh, nine pure priests and they are pure and they are waiting. So we have the priest, we have the red heifer, we have the land and we have everything ready. We just need to wait another one and a half year. The Temple Institute is so serious about these preparations that they have already used diamond cutting tools to form the massive stones that will be used for construction of the new temple. As per Jewish creed, the stones cannot be carved with metal tools. And they have even prepared the ornaments that will be placed inside the temple once it's rebuilt. And there are many other specific requirements for the temple's construction that have been undertaken. Okay, so now you should understand why Abu Ubaidah made it a point to mention the arrival of the red heifers. To you and I, it may seem like a superstitious ritual with no bearing on the situation, but as I have already laid out, it is the first major step in a series of steps that will facilitate the destruction of the Al-Aqsa compound. And this is what will trigger a catastrophic showdown between civilizations. Once the heifer is sacrificed, it will be burned and its ashes will be mixed with water, which will be used to purify the Jews of Israel, who will then be allowed to construct the temple. With the ornaments and construction materials already prepared in accordance with Jewish law, this process will be rather quick. Another thing to keep in mind is the archaeological excavation that has been taking place underneath the Al-Aqsa compound. The Israelis claim it's for archaeological purposes, but they have never allowed Palestinians to participate or even observe this process. Many believe that this excavation is part of a dangerous agenda to weaken the foundations of the Al-Aqsa Mosque and bring about its collapse. There are reports of growing cracks in the foundation walls and ceilings of the mosque itself. Any attempt to repair them has been ignored and rejected by the Israeli government. In 2023, these excavations reached their most extreme point, with unprecedented levels of digging taking place underneath the compound. And in May of 2023, just a year ago, Netanyahu's cabinet held a meeting underneath Al-Aqsa. If you still aren't convinced of the intent of the Temple Institute to destroy the mosque, just take a look at this purpose statement on their website. In it, they detail that the Temple Mount rightfully belongs to the Jews, that the Palestinians are the modern people of Amalek, a tribe which the Jews destroyed thousands of years ago. This is pretty f***ing crazy, right? This isn't just the mission of some NGO operating in Israel. It's an entire movement picking up steam that is pervasive in Israeli society. The Temple Institute has given custom-made battle horns used during the war with the Amaleks to the IDF so that they can blow them in the Gaza Strip. And soldiers can be seen erecting signs, flags, and graffiti on homes in the Gaza Strip announcing the coming of the Temple and the destruction of the mosque. The writing is literally on the wall. Most Christians, I think, don't think about the Third Temple, uh, but those who do uh, believe that it will be built before Jesus returns and that the Antichrist will take over that Third Temple during the Tribulation and try to rule the world from there. Could it happen in our lifetime? That, to me, is intriguing. I, I think we don't know, but there are some Jews who are really making, as you're, as you're reporting on, preparations to get ready for that moment, and that's something to watch closely. To many, this isn't just a war between a rebel group and an occupier. It's a war of conquest by religious zealots in the same vein as the Crusaders and ISIS. And it's all coming to a head. Hamas felt so strongly about this provocation that they cited it as a motive for October 7th. <laughs> تطبيقا لخرافة دينية مقيتة مصممة للعدوان على مشاعر أمة كاملة. It wasn't only a desperate plea to the world to pay attention to the plight of the Palestinian people. It was a warning to the entire Muslim world that one of their holiest sites is under threat of destruction because they see the writing on the 
wall. They see the calls from organizations like the Temple Institute and the people who fund them. They see the policies being enacted by the violent and religiously extremist Israeli government, working hand in hand with evangelical Christian extremists. They see the indoctrination of their children, the future generation, where they make their intent clear to destroy the mosque and replace it with the third temple. They understand that these people are working towards their prophesied end times. And they understand that these extremist Jews and evangelicals believe that the key event to triggering this violence, destruction, and chaos is the construction of the third temple. And the construction of this temple doesn't begin until the red heifers are slaughtered, sacrificed, and burned on the Mount of Olives in East Jerusalem. Now, if you think all of this is nonsense, that it doesn't matter, well, it does. And this kind of religious extremism should be worrying because just imagine what the destruction of the Al-Aqsa Mosque would do to a world currently reeling from the conflict in Ukraine, the genocide in Gaza, the Houthis blockade of the Red Sea, and the Iranian proxy skirmishes with the United States. Such an event would have the potential to kickstart not just a wider regional war in the Middle East. At best, it would result in global energy and economic crisis, and at worst, nuclear world war. So I don't know about you, but I'm kind of hoping these red heifers grow a few strands of white hairs to invalidate them for the sacrifice, and that someone starts reining in these Israeli and evangelical extremists the same way they reeled in ISIS, because at least ISIS didn't have nukes. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to our channel and donating to our production process. This content takes time to produce, and it's impossible without your support. To a better world, peace. Trust nothing. No, no.